Hey guys, I am penned down uh, out of society because, you know, you can tell from the last episode or that um, this, this virus got everybody afraid to go out in public and, you know, I really miss Walmart, don't you? Anyway, I'm out here. I've got some stuff drying up in the shop and the next part you're going to see is I've got some really cool Mississippi uh, matchbooks that I'm going to put on a neck. Um, and, you know, sometimes people learn to, to discover the patterns in here um, on these specific matchbooks instead of having fret markers. And I'm still going to have fret markers along the side. And this episode is actually going to be about a quick down and dirty way to put fret markers on. Today's music is Cold Motor uh, by Bob Log III. It's actually Bob Log III's first song he did as a one-man band it's on the album school bus here let me cool this down without getting indecent bob log the third school bus do not cover my shirt okay so you might be asking yourself why am i sitting under a railroad trestle because there's going to be a train coming by right over my head i guarantee you uh but what do trains have to do with the blues a lot of people running around this country maybe escaping the mechanization of the cotton industry and the late 30s early 40s you know the Illinois Central tracks were running right through Lula Mississippi did you know that what a great way to uh, get to Chicago if you don't have uh, first-class traveling arrangements a lot of people didn't back then anyway um, we're gonna sit on this railroad track until a train comes by by that time all the stuff I got Right, guys I'm back in the shop after that windy train thing um, most of that footage got blown out except I hope you caught school bus by Bob log the third is the music of this episode yeah do not covet this this is a Japanese import version of this or issue or whatever you want to call it yeah that is Bob log the third signature it's important that there's an arrow there so you can tell that that's actually Bob log the third so he doesn't get blended into the crowd. Anyway, still got the fat possum <laughs> order form. But my song on here is Cold Motor. Anyway, we were talking about trains and what trains have to do with the blues. You see this? Train Depot IC, Illinois Central Train Depot, 1968, Lula, Mississippi. Look at that. Plymouth Dodge grocery go get or whatever but you can tell most of the windows of this place are busted out anyway this is where Sun House met Charlie Patton Charlie Patton then took him up to Grafton Wisconsin to record at the Wisconsin Chair Company which is Paramount Records and so trains and blues have always been hooked together like I tried to say in the in the windy video Lula Mississippi Illinois Central if you don't have enough money to escape the uh, mechanization of the cotton industry back then, you might just jump on the Illinois Central, hope the bulls don't catch you and get your way up to Chicago and find some work. But anyway, you're going to see this show up on a guitar somewhere. Okay, so I just got done putting the fret markers on the side or top where the right-handed guitar player is looking. And um, I'm flipping these over to do what I usually do and that's to put matchbooks on here it all of a sudden dawned on me that well if I cover this up with matchbooks and start off with a little Earl Lube paste right here like so and then Mississippi welcomes you right we'll put that up there like that Yeah, these are Mississippi Festival guitars, if you didn't do the math on that. Anyway, I get people asking me, 
uh, how am I supposed to see the fret markers? Well, um, I guess you would learn the matchbooks or something. Then it dawned on me, you know what? It's just as easy for me to show you guys a quick down and dirty way to use these little plastic circular, I don't know what they are, I'm not sure I want to know, but I get them from my friend Michael Breedlove. Can you see that? Uh, they come in black and white and they're just little circles of plastic, sticks of plastic. You just basically drill a hole here where you want them and whichever one contrasts the best with the wood, you use that one, see? Um, so, I'm going to actually stop matchbooking for a minute here and I'm going to show you how to use these and lay out... Um, the fret markers on the fingerboard or fretboard, I call this fingerboard. Um, how, to, how to draw it out, drill it, and do whatever. Now you want to remember I did a big long episode called uh, Fret Markers. And I'm going to give you a link to it right up there. And you can use brad nails, you can use golf tees, you can just use just about anything. And you might want to check that out. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use Michael Breedlove MGB. These little things here. You know what? It's not like I'm addicted to Michael Breedlove's products, but I mean he just sells them they get here and they're economical and I, they don't fail. So um, if that's a shout out, I guess it is. Anyway, let's get set up and we'll show you how to do this. Guys, I almost forgot to tell you, it is my birthday. Cold motor in the background and I got this cake. It is so moist. It's literally unbelievable. Look at that. All right, first things first, you're going to want to get a, a supply of these fret markers. Um, again, they come in black and white. I'm going to suggest that maybe it would be cool if they came in red or blue too, but we'll see. Um, you're going to need a drill bit. Drill bit's going to be the same size, or just a tad smaller than the fret marker material. And notice that I put a flapper on here made out of painter's tape. Because I don't want to be drilling all the way down. I don't need to waste that much. So I'm going to put about that much on there. And you'll see when I drill, when this flaps around like this, you'll know when you're in deep enough because this will clear the sawdust off of your wart. See that? Keep watching it and you'll quit smoking. Now you're going to need a straight edge. I like this thing. You've seen me use it as a depth gauge. Uh, but you're going to need a straight edge. Something smaller is better. You're going to need a really, really sharp pencil. Don't let this pencil get dull. Look at that pencil. Yeah, it says my name. You should screenshot that so you can remember how to spell my name. Next, you're going to need one of these trusty flush cut saws and a file. Now, next thing you're going to do is you're going to figure out where you want your fret markers. I always put mine at 357 and 12 there's people that do them at 9 and 14 and on further down the fretboard but next thing you need to understand is they typically uh, go before the fret there they mark so the third fret is right here but the marker is right here so when I start putting them up here they're still going to be in the same spot so you always need to know halfway between for the third fret it's between the second and third fret halfway so you need to figure out where are you going to mark your frets. Are they going to be 3, 5, 7, 9, 12, and 14 or whatever. Know that and then start marking that off on your fingerboard. Now, we're not going to do this after the fingerboard is fretted. We're going to do it before it's fretted. So let me change the setup here. Okay, guys, I've got a couple markups going on here. I've taken a piece of neck board and put a piece of cutoff fingerboard on it's still got the slots in it we're going to use that here in a minute when we actually start drilling this stuff um, but I've got a 25 and a half scale fingerboard here now doesn't that space right there look pretty shy well it's not for that this is actually where your finger, where your nut is going to go now sometimes I put I'll cut that off like on this one right here just cut it off right there and then I'm going to put a bone nut right here other times and other people they want to make a cut right here and make a slot right here so they can drop in one of 
you've seen these I used to use these early acorn nuts and I flatten them out a little bit like that see and then I just put them the width of the fingerboard tighten them up or you could use a piece of wood so you cut this piece of wood down into here the width of it mark it like so and then do the slot deep enough to sit this here you might use a bone nut you can use it whatever you want but don't make the mistake of thinking the 25 and a half scale starts here it actually starts right here now next thing I want to do is maybe I'll use painters tape something like this I don't want to stick everything up but if I want to mark my frets okay forget this one one two three so I'm gonna put one there and I can just put these down like so four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so that would be marked up enough for me right there so I know where my stuff is going to be I could also make a little mark right here in fact let's do that and let's do the next step now this fretboard is not cut to width but let's pretend it is or maybe it's a six string uh, I'm at 48 millimeters again comes in handy because if I was doing this I'd be at one or two inches and a little bit below an eighth so it's just as easy to do it this way I'm at 48 so half of 48 is 24 so I'm gonna come over to 24 in the vicinity of all my tapes I'm gonna mark 24 I'm gonna want to know where the center of this is so let me mark another one down here get that to the edge and I'm gonna mark 24 then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this sideways and run all the way down and make make my center point okay you with me so you need a center line all the way down okay so uh so i didn't mark this one all up i'm just go back in my drawer stock so i did the uh, mock-up i put marks where the center is on two sides i'm going to take again my sharp pencil and about the width of a pencil tip i'm going to make a mark right down the center like that now maybe I'm not going to have want to put marks to address later only where my frets are so I would just when I lay my my straight edge off I can look here and say okay I'm gonna need one there 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 and there you follow me but you need to know where the center line is in relation to where your frets are now let's talk about marking the frets off uh, let's say that on my mock up here I want to look at this distance between these two so I'm gonna put that fret line there put another one here and we're just gonna pretend that there is a fret right here so this right here represents the distance between the second and third fret you follow me there so you're all with me here thus far second third fret that's meant to mean that so now I'm going to take my straight edge and my sharp pencil and I'm going to make sure that I can see that point there and that point there and I'm just going to go like that see now I'm going to turn it the other way I'm going to do the same thing I'll make sure that that I can see that it's sticking out the width of my pencil and this one is too so I'm going to make that X there you see that a nice X guess what that X is it's the center of the distance between the frets and you can get that whether you want to do this little one up here that would be down around the 21st fret it's a little bit trickier here but you get the idea we go like that flip it around and do that you see so we know where the center is next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our square again if I can ever get it tightened up and I'm going to lay that so I can see that right there you see that I might want to make a little line here on the 12th fret because I'm going to end up with a couple of fret markers maybe here and here but anyway I want to make sure I know where that edge is right there then I want to transfer that mark 
down to the side see right there like so so I can basically eyeball that and said okay this fingerboards about this thick or maybe I want to put the fret marker right on that line where the fret board meets the neck board I've seen people do that it's probably a little bit safer but I like to put mine right there so again at this point we've got this lines intersect to make the center we come off the center come down here so we know that those are going to line up see that and I've got a mark now before I start drilling here I'm going to take my all you all see me talking about it all because if I start doing this and this starts drifting all over the place you only get one shot at this of course you can cover it up with matchbooks if you don't do it right but I'm going to set this all right on that point and I'm going to tap it I'm going to over, go over here I'm also going to set my all right there where I want that fret marker to line up and I'm going to tap it now while I'm here let's say that this is the 12th fret of course it's not and I want to put two fret markers or even three there I want to figure out where my other one's going to go I'm going to make a line like that I'm going to make sure I tighten this up I don't know how many times I've done this use this as a depth gauge and then come over here and, and then not tighten it up but okay so let's pretend this is my 12th fret and I want to put instead of one marker, I want to put three or even two or whatever I want. I'm just tapping that like that. Okay? You with me? Now I'm going to take my drill bit with my flapper on it. I'm going to set it right where I put that all. And I'm going to run this down. Until that flapper starts taking the sawdust off. Did you see that? Look at that. Perfect. I'm going to go over here to the center one. I'm going to do the same thing. You see that? It's actually going to be my third fret. Or supposed to be. Then I'm going to go over where I want the other one. For, I want to do a 12 fret. And I'm going to do that. Now there's no sense in going so deep with this thing that you're going halfway through the neck. It's just again, that much will work. Now you want to get something with a, a pointed end that you can put glue down in one of each of those like so. There we go. I got those filled with glue. Do that so I can see where the holes are. All right, now, this is where your other tools come in. You need a set of snips. Do not use your good fret pliers for this, please. Don't use these for anything but frets. You'll end up with a nick in them and you'll hate life. But you need a nipper, you need your flush cut saw, and you need a file. And now what we're going to do is I've, I'm using the black stuff because it will contrast the most. I'm going to go to each one of these holes, like so, and I'm just going to push down, and I'm going to cut it as close as I can get. Yeah, you can feel it slip down. I like doing the same task until they're all done and that way we can assembly line this. Alright, now a couple things we can do. We can take this saw and do this if we need to. Or if you cut them fairly close, you can just take your file and file them down like so. You could also go to a belt sander, but you want to be careful because, remember, this is a fret board. You're not going to start doing this with it because you haven't put the frets in it yet. But you're going to just basically do this until you can see the nice pattern on the fret markers. See? 
and you can feel it nice and smooth see that let's look at one that's laid out and one that's done all right here is one that has been marked up and fretted one of my prized possessions an old neck from Darren Dukes so you've got three five seven nine twelve 15, 17, 19, and 21 is the way that one was done up. But you can see it's the same thing. You just make your marks. You find your middle and do your thing. And then once you get them marked up and smoothed off, this is what one that's done looks like. You see there? This one is in white fret. So pretty easy to do. You want to remember you don't want to do this with your frets on because if the frets were on, you'd end up having... A mess here trying to mark everything off so again this is before the frets are done and get this fingerboard nice and smooth remember when you're doing this don't be taking a big file like so and chunking down into it and all that kind of stuff and getting things not right when you start digging down where your frets go um, your fret slots and start changing the level of that in comparison to the whole thing you're gonna have a mess so there it is. It's that simple. All right, guys, let's wrap this up. Don't forget, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, don't forget the comments because that's where you find links on where to buy this stuff. You also get a reminder of what the music for the day has been. And this is Bob Log the Third, School Bus. That number 10 can't beat it. Cold motor right away. Yeah, you need this one. Now, given what's going on around us, I actually thought that the music shout out might be this time we get way out in the weeds and go with the knack, my Corona, but I just couldn't figure out how to make that one work. So, see you next time. <laughs> Do 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 do